Hi everyone and welcome back. Welcome to my fourth video on Prisma. I, I, this is like the fourth episode, not the first one. Okay, so in the, the previous episodes, we have already seen how to set up the Prisma, how to bootstrap a simple uh, express type script app and then we explored uh, the Prisma schema by creating a different type of models, user, blog post, uh, uh, banking system, these kind of schema models we have seen and we have executed the Prisma migration command which uh, which is generating the, the real tables in the database and we have explored all those things. Now this is the time to actually see the Prisma client, Prisma client APIs to access the data, insert, update, delete, find, find, all these kind of operations we are going to explore. So I'm starting a very fresh project which is totally empty and we are going to set up everything from ground zero. So what we have to do is uh, we don't have a package.json we just have a prisma.schema in this and this project is uh, express prisma postgres api so we are using postgres as a database express uh, as the framework and prisma is a orm layer what we will do is npm init and we, we already know that what kind of uh, dependencies we need so we'll just install all those dependencies instead of uh, installing one by one we need prisma we need prisma client and all the other dependencies which we need to run a simple express type script app with uh, the testing through the jest with the the linting and uh, formatting with the prettier testing with jest and dot env all these kind of different modules we need so i will try to install a couple of them and then we will go from there npm install minus minus save first you will install the prisma dependencies so first is prisma client the latest one and we will install prisma okay then we can install express we have we are going to use some kind of a simple login system so we can use express jwt then we have a json web token and rest we will install whenever we have a need like uh, i also have another in, in dependency related to swagger okay swagger ui express that we can install so these are actually code dependencies rest we will keep installing whenever we need them and then rest all our typings okay so i will just open another terminal and from there we can install express Swagger UI Express. This is another dependencies which we will need to expose our APIs. Okay. And then I can install a couple of dev dependencies like okay, the types no, types express, types uh, all the, the typings. Okay. So I will just type npm install minus minus a minus dev. What all types we need? Types express types node we are going to use jest also so jest as a dependency and jest for the types okay types uh, json web token eslint and couple of more I, I don't want to install all the dependencies like this we can i can just use uh, rest all the things from my package.json okay once we have all these dependencies set up like we also need typescript because we are going to write express typescript project so what i will do is i will just simply copy my template like the package.json which contains all the dependencies related to the pretty rc all the eslint uh, dependencies typescript eslint typescript eslint parser uh, types for json web token types for jest ts jest typescript ts node dev all the dependencies which you can see in any express typescript project okay so what we will do is let's see what we are able to populate in the package.json so we have all these dependencies coming up we have the prisma so now we need to add the scripts scripts related to okay how we are going to run the application like we can use ts node dev we can use node mon 
we can we will be using tsc typescript compiler to build the code we are going to have a ts config file in the project and all the other uh, npm scripts related to the prisma like prisma migrate prisma format prisma generate prisma studio prisma reset all these prisma reset is actually to reset the, the migrations prisma format to check the formation and expose any errors if we have done in the writing the prisma migration and prisma migration to actually run the migration prisma generate to generate the client and prisma generate watch like sometimes what happens is you keep changing the models frequently so you can actually use prisma generate watch it actually checks your models and it applies those while creating the new prisma client okay so let's do that i will uh, update my package.json and then together we will update all the npm scripts so i have this basic setup i have all the dependencies added so what we can do is simply npm install and now we are writing typescript project so it's not straightforward we need to have a typescript compiler and ts config file right so what i will do is i will copy the ts config file here which will help us to build the code and you can see it's like a ts config template i have and it is going to just build the code and put all the code inside our directory disk okay and we can use nodemon which is going to use ts node to compile the project npm install minus minus a minus dev nodemon and ts node these two dependencies you can add and then you can create a nodemon.json you know almost all my projects i use nodemon nodemon is really nice tool to set up your projects now with the nodemon what do we need we just need to have a nodemon.json and it will have the, the location from where we are going to start the project and it is using ts node to bootstrap the application first get the npm install done so we will just use the nodemon.json and what we are going to do is we are going to start the application and we are going to create a src folder there we are going to have index.ts file so let's create a folder source and there we can have an index.ts file okay now i can update my package.json so that it start it starts using node moon for running the application locally i mean on the production we will always use node and the compiled uh, output so here you can say you can do start dev and you can just use node one command that's it and let's wait for this installations to be done because we have done npm install once this is over what we can do is npm run start dev it will use node one node one will use node one dot json it is already using ts node to run the project ts node will also look at the ts config file and i mean it's like a watcher it will keep watching your source src folder and if you change the code it will again restart the application src index.ts so if i just run this now npm run start dev then it will break because our npm install is still running and here i think this is already done let's do this start dev it will use nodemon for compiling and currently we don't have any code right uh, so let's say source index.ts it's nothing but we will add some code here and inside this it will just put the compiled output that's it so we have just basic setup ready now we will start adding the express component all the ad additional files like the prettier rc eslint rc uh, eslint igno dot env files all the environment files uh, ts config we already have so 
I think now the basic setup is ready, right? So let's cancel this and let's focus on our entities. We can kill these terminals. Now let's come back to Prisma and Prisma scripts we have added in the project. So you can also add a simple build command. I mean, this is already happening after post install, but this is fine if you add this. So npm run build, it will just use TypeScript build, TSC is TypeScript compiler and it will just generate a dist folder and npm run start, this should be the start prod because here we are actually running the compiled output. Now looking at the Prisma, first of all we need to check do we have container running, if container is running that's a good news, we can just focus on writing the Prisma schema file, okay it's running. So what we can do is let's uh, focus on what all different entities we want to have in the project. I want to have a project where I have I can show the different relationships like I'm going to have some kind of a blogging system. So schema.prisma and here I will start adding. We have already seen a couple of examples right. So same site same type of examples we are going to add like we are going to have a user, comments, tags, articles, all those things. So we'll try to start modeling one by one, model user and here id which is int id and default is auto incremented. Similarly we'll add email which is auto string and it is unique. Uh, I think it's a good idea if I copy all those things from my previous example, previous demo which we have done. Password is also of type string. Okay, and the profile image which is of type string but can be a null. So if here also you can also put some default value if you want to have like some URL, HTTPS google.com me.jpg something like that and then here because this is a user entity and what we are trying to build is the blogging system so we are going to have articles tags comments user will be writing articles where people can add a comments you will be able to tag the articles right so first of all let's model our article because article is the, the root. So first is the article model and here we are going to have a couple of we can copy something from here. ID is auto incremented then because articles will have a slug. Slug is a string non unique and title description all these properties. Title description created at and updated at and I think we already have something like updated at uh, let me just check yes uh, in the last video we used that uh, first of all we'll just need to specify the type date time for both and then we can specify some default yeah default updated at that we can use for updated at and this is the default value for this is now this is really helpful i installed one plugin related to prisma and i can auto complete a lot of things now the article will have the author article will have number of tags article will have the list of comments right so article is kind of a root entity which will have a relationship with the most of the entities okay let's say the tag list so tag is the another model we are going to create we have author which will be a user because somebody is writing it and here we can actually create a relation relationship with the relationship name is user articles These are the user articles and the field for the reference is the author ID. 
So here we are going to create author ID as an integer. Author ID and that is integer. So this is the reference. So this is the field and here we are going to create the reference for this. Reference will be the ID primary key of the user's table. So you see, I mean, I just added the relationship name here. The fields in this article table is author ID and it is referenced with the ID primary key in the user entity. Okay, so this is our author, author ID and then uh, this article may be uh, tagged as a favorite but I think those are the advanced features which we can add later. We have comments which will be pointing to the comment model. Now we have a tag and comment to other models. Let's uh, structure them model tag is that's a tag list because uh, one article can have a multiple tags and we can copy a couple of columns and change the names so tag will have a id then we it will have a name of the tag is of type string article and it will point to a multiple article array this is sorted and then we have comment so comment may have a couple of more things model comment i mean you can also use the other attributes like at the rate map that is going to help you to actually change the table name let's say it can be uh, the post tags something like that right that we have already seen how you can use them and now why it is complaining okay i'm adding comment and comment will have the same id created at updated at so first of all the default columns you can use either the sneak case and use it the same everywhere date time default now this is the id body comment body is of type string like what comment you are adding then we have article id to which article you are adding a comment that is of type integer and now i will define the relationship here with article article and here is the relations uh, fields the local field will be the article id local field is article id that is referenced with the id in the article table and then i have the author because if you are adding a comment then there is an author somebody is adding that comment so it will have a relationship with the user relations and the field will be here the author id so same as article id we are going to have another column that is author id Now, I mean, for me, like writing these are very easy because after writing a couple of examples from scratch, it is able to identify what should be written here. Okay. And it is referenced with the ID in the user table. So this is author. Author ID is integer. Okay. And author ID is integer. Why it is complaining? author relationship with the author id that is fine and now here in the comments i think we mismatch the names here article has an author comment also has an author relationship with the author id author id is integer reference with id so let's see what is the problem either run the prisma format or add it manually it's better if i run prisma format and it did some magic okay so few things were missing from the user because if you undo this we don't have these things inside a user that i was going to add like user was uh, the first model we started but we also need to add the associations back to the user user will have article 
relationship with the user articles and this is article this is comments then we have i think these are the 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 basic relationships we have added we can we can groom it a little bit more let's say because what we are doing is uh user user can have couple of more columns like the the favorites like you mark some favorites what will be the favorites favorites are nothing but the articles right relationship is and this can be the user favorites and here inside an article you can define the another relationship is in the article is favorited by favorited by sorry and then this can be a user favorites it's going to be the the reference is going to be the same reference is the id and inside user we are going to use this relationship user favorites okay now inside user what else is missing you can add the favorites followed by uh, let's go to the user we have favorites followed by so we can add couple of more relationships because user may have been followed by and may be following something following couple of more users so here let's copy this and here i can say is followed by and following so it is going to relationship with the user array and you can put some relationship name and then reference reference that with the id it's like self references we are creating you understand like this user is followed by couple of other users so it's like a self relationship here you can say user follows same relationship name okay now let's see now we have everything sorted i think this this line is not a valid field or attribute definition what is wrong with this is that one comma was missing yeah everything is sorted now you can see our models now let's take a look back on to this article user is writing an article we will also see this on the relationship layout like how these one to one one to many many to many relationships are created and what is the meaning of these relationship names which we have started using okay so article will have a author article will can be favorited by article will have a comment article so all the things we have added here this is the author relationship article may be favorited by your bookmark by some user an article will have a list of tags article will have a multiple comments on top of it so here we have a relationship with the user author id which is of integer so this is the the foreign key in this table pointing to the primary key id from the user same here comments comments will be uh, pointing to some particular article so comment will have a foreign key article id right or it will be written by some user at the end so it will have a foreign key user id in this like author id here author id and the article id both are integer tag tag will have like a, a, a single article can have multiple tags and one tags is pointed to the multiple multiple articles so it's like many to many user user will be writing the comments user will be writing the articles user will, will be 
followed by some other user user might be following some other user 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 will be writing the comments so all the relationships are defined here now it it's important that where you are going to define the array relationship and where you are going to define the relations okay let let's go into the deep dive on into this run the migrations and then we define the relationships through the ERD diagram of the Postgres. So what is the next step running the Prisma migration and here we do have env file I have Postgres container running what I will do is npm run Prisma migrate and what it is going to do is it is going to migrate before that we can just do all the other commands format Prisma format uh, its format and then after this we can just use uh, Prisma migrate command that will do the, the real migration everything is fine so here we can just execute the migrate command it will use this .env file to check uh, our database where is our database and then it will run the migration against that and we will have all the tables ready I wanted to wipe out the existing data structure whatever we have there and it is creating the, the new migration for me and here we can just see that migration I, I mean you can also put the migration name I skip that otherwise it will create a migration name and here we have all the tables now you can see the major tables we have article we have comments we have tag and the user and then all the relationship tables have been defined here like article tag, tag many to many user favorites I think it's also many to many and user follows and here we are defining the constraint so these things we can understand from the tables like what all okay these are the tables you can see the created and here you can see the structure of the user this is unique this is unique and we have the primary key foreign key this is user as a primary key and all the other relationships you can see user favorites so it is uh, you can see article dot id user dot id user favorites like user is marking one particular article favorite so here we are creating many to many relationship putting the user id and the article id relationship here we have user follows so it is the user it's a self join I mean the self relationship another table which is having two different IDs okay this user follows that user so it's like another third table which is managing the okay this user ID follows these hundred users so this will have hundred records in it user favorites article to tag means one article can have multiple tag and one tag can have multiple can be uh, added in the multiple articles so it's like many to many again and here you can see article dot ID and tag dot ID inside this many to many table so here we have you can also check the ddls and all i can check the ddl of other major tables here you can see create unique table unique index and we have some references in the article there is author id and if we see the comment inside the comment we have author id and article id as a foreign key okay so uh, this is it guys we have executed the migrations and now we have everything ready now what is the next step writing the apis first of all generating the prisma client and then writing the apis so for generating the prisma client we can just execute the simple steps we already have the command ready with us inside package.json i think it's a prisma generate Prisma generate and you can also execute Prisma generate watch it will keep watching your models if you change them it will automatically update your Prisma client and here we can also expose the Prisma client it's not like we always need to look into uh, node modules here I can create a Prisma client and I can add that Prisma client in the global object of node.js so what I can do is I will talk about this how, how we are planning this prisma client.ts first of all we will see the prisma client which has been added in the node modules prisma and here we do have prisma client definition 
and here we should have okay articles all the entities all the models are there inside not modules and it is exposing all the methods of the prisma apis okay prisma dot article dot find many find save insert update delete i mean the normal crud operations here i wanted to add the prisma client object into the node.js global object so we don't need to do new prisma client and all so this snippet is provided by uh, let me just see how we can do it where we have prisma client and this is provided by the prisma documentation itself what it is saying is you can assign the prisma client object so if global.prisma is already there do not do anything otherwise create a new prisma client and this prisma client you can assign in the global object global.prisma equal to prisma if this is the development right so it what it is doing it is preventing the multiple prisma client instance that might not be a singleton so what we are doing if you are on the development environment we are checking if in the global we already have prisma then assign it and then add that to the global.prisma and then we can just use simple global.prisma dot users global.prisma dot tags global.prisma dot comments all these different apis now we are going to write express mvc style of controller services and all we can also add some configurations like eslint rc and all all those things i will just add like we have a couple of files i will just add just config and all so this is my eslint rc we already have a eslint files eslint dev dependencies prettier prettier rc just config we can write some test cases okay so now we can just get started in writing our apis inside source you can create controllers controller services and all controllers models then we have services we can just create some skeleton then we will fill that up utils and the express routes and our index.ts we already have we can also create one test directory because we are doing end-to-end -end setup and we are also going to deploy this to let's say Heroku if we are able to find the, the Prisma instance there okay 